best entertainment on the earth. Tune in for Comics with Birch. Hey, everybody, this is Birch. You know, I was at LC, I, mean, I was, I was running an LCS, a uh, couple at the, at that exact moment. Um, when DC made the announcement that they were going to put comics and, and kind of these anthology, these kind of bigger things out to Walmart and these the 80 page giants, and they weren't going to be offered to the comic shops or going to be offered just to Walmart. And it was this fascinating moment because it was like this, um, this immediate divide took place. I would say, and not, not, it wasn't 50-50, it was probably more 30-70. Um, and there are certainly plenty of LCS owners and, and people who uh, works in, in the direct market who didn't care and kind of ignored the whole thing. Uh, but there was these very powerful reactions of, this is great. This is going to get comics and these characters and the idea that comics still exist back out into the newsstand. This will help bring new readers in. Um, DC had made some promises and they did fulfill them that the 80 page giants would say things like, uh, you know, go to your LCS, go to your comic shop for more. There'd be some, some, some promotion inside the books and that this was a good thing. This is something that was going to help comics. And then there was another group that said, this is fatly unfair. They're trying to screw us over. Why aren't these offered through the LCS? And then, and then all these, in my mind, you could guess based on how I'm talking, which side of the equation I fell on, but this, uh, this other side that, that started offering up these very weird solutions, like, well, you should give them to the LCS first, you know, for a month to give us an exclusive. Then you can offer them out into, uh, into Walmart, places like that. And then there were a couple of people, I, I want to say Brian Hibbs, but a couple, I, probably not Brian, actually. Um, there, there are some kind of louder voices in the retailer world who are like, this is going to kill comics. This is going to be the death of comics. It's going to be the death of comics because, well, that, that part was never very clear, but it was, the idea was that, you know, now people would stop going to the LCS altogether, that, you know, Walmart would start carrying comics, but Walmart doesn't care about comics, so they wouldn't treat it well, and it would be, just just this this doomsday scenario, like so many things that happen in comics, every change equals a doomsday scenario. So that's that's how it played out. Now, of course, DC went ahead. They put the stuff into Walmart. Walmart proceeded to put these big books in the most obscure place possible, the entire store where nobody could find them. And in the end, they did pretty much nothing. You know, the comic industry did not die. And uh, they also didn't bring a lot of people into the LCS. DC, um, having talked to a lot of people in DC at the time, had its own weird little civil war going on inside the company, where there were people inside of DC who hated the idea. Um, I, I remember, you know, very clearly one one individual at DC believed Walmart was a uh, you know redneck Republican kind of stronghold, and this was catering to the uh, you know to that crowd. It's a, <laughs> I really hope that the world can evolve past a point where everything has to be seen through a lens of Republican and Democrat. It's not healthy. It's, it, it, I mean, clearly not healthy. But anyway, so, you know, it was, uh, it was just bad. Walmart was a disgusting, you know, right-wing kind of company, and it was, it was horrible. And, and you know, other people at uh, D.C. were like, no, no, this is going to open up the newsstand again in some little way, and we're going to get stuff. Anyway, I, I believe that when D.C. went to do it, they didn't, fully pull they, they pulled their punch it definitely had the feeling like uh, because of all the arguments and because of all the the back and forth and everything else dc went in a little quieter and they just they kind of um you know they, they basically didn't give it its full they didn't give it its their full attention they intentionally kind of uh, not not sabotage because they didn't put the stuff out and there were you know they had at the time, they put a, you know, King story in there and a Binda story in there and a bigger writers. Uh, but it just, it, it, it felt like something they were half embarrassed about. I guess that's the best way to put it. You know, they didn't, they didn't do a big, they didn't try to really promote it. And then Walmart didn't really try to promote it and nothing really happened. But that entire experiment I thought was pretty revealing in the sense that, you know, the, and again, keep in mind the context this is coming from is, you know, I, I was a retailer for 25 plus years. I had stores. I made money. I, I like comic shops. I like going into comic shops. I 
you know, my uh, wife and kids do not understand at this point. My kids have gotten older. Uh, you know, remember, my kids are pretty young when I still had the shop. My older daughter certainly still remembers it. The younger one sort of does um, because that was, you know, 20, you know, 2019. So, you know, several years, you know, we've, we've had, you know, four years, a little less than four years go by. And so for a kid, for a young kid, that's, that's a lot of time, actually. And so anyway, um, you know, they, they, whenever we're driving around, I see a comic shop. I'm like, Hey, let's go in there. You know? And, and my, my kids are like, oh, fuck, no, no. You know, <laughs> and my wife's like, why are you going? Why? But I want to see what other people are doing. I want to, you know, talk to people and everything else. And I've definitely freaked plenty of people out when we travel around. I go in comic shops, but I, I think, and I've said this before, but the, the Walmart situation, these books really identified the problem which is if the comic industry wants to grow, regardless of if you love your LCS or not, regardless if you own an LCS or not, the LCS is creating a big part of the trap. The LCS is a specialty shop. It's a novelty shop. And there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. Some of my favorite shops are novelty shops. And I, I think, you know, they, if they optimize to their audience, they're going to be able to survive. They're going to be able to predict the revenue, you know, as long as they don't have too high a spend, they can have this be a comic museum, a pop culture shop, all the rest. There's, there's a business there. If you run your business properly, you, you know, there is a business there. There's a world there, a route. But for comics as a whole, it, it's an anchor. It, it's, it's holding things back. It's why there is some enthusiasm around crowdfunding and where you see other things. It's just any other option. They comics out there. Comics wins through volume. It, the business I'm talking about, it, it, needs, it needs lots and lots of copies sold, lots and lots of availability. Imagine if video games, you know, which are sold all over the place, big box stores, you can certainly order them on Amazon, everything else, they're specialty game stores. So imagine if the only place in the entire country, world, that you could buy a video game at was, your, was a GameStop. They, they, that was it. And then Amazon kind of half-assed it. There's a few things there, but not really. And, and nothing else. The game industry would be somewhat crippled. It would be a massive dent. The game industry needs Target and Walmart and these and other sources. I mean, hell, you know, I do a lot of traveling. I go to the airport, pretty common that there's a vending machine in the airport that has a Nintendo Switch, the actual console, and games. And I always thought to myself, nobody in their right mind is buying their, you know, a Switch in an airport. But a lot of people do. It's actually a, a, a decent business. You know, it, 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 it uh, comics, this, this idea that it has to be stuck in this tiny regional shop is unnatural. And ultimately, it's harmful to the tiny regional shop. And that is the big, that's, that's like in the world of comics, the world of comic retailers, that's as much of a religious war or discussion as Republican Democrat. You know, it, it, is, it is polarizing of a conversation. Should comics be sold just here or everywhere? And I, I, I believe that, you know, one, this, the, the facts in this case are already well established. It, if, if you want to survive, if you want to grow, they have to be sold everywhere. Again, regardless of the content. I, I, I hear, I hear you, I, you know, I don't need to keep adding this disclaimer. Look, I know you're, I, people keep adding it to the comments, but, but look, uh, you, you, you can't survive in a niche or you have to basically submit to the will of the niche. So I use both, both pronunciations of the word right there. You have to submit to it. You know, I, going to uh, comic conventions stopped at, uh, you know, outside Emerald City Comic Con recently. And looking at the people coming in, you know, lots of cosplayers, lots of, uh, lots of people. But the, the majority of people coming in the door are people that I'm sure are really into the X-Men Krakoa era that we currently have. And they're dressed as characters. There's a lot of alternative lifestyle stuff there. Again, it, much higher percentage than you see in the rest of the world. We're there. But all that tells you is that comics is appealing to a niche audience right now, a segment of the population. And for that segment of the population, life is good 
they're happy, all great. But for the industry as a whole, it's bad because it's a tiny niche. Comics, as I've said this before, it's not meant to be small. It's meant to be a mass market product. But a mass, mar pro mass market product sold in, a, in specialty stores doesn't work. And on top of that, you know, to make matters even worse, the majority, and it is the majority, of people who buy comics are people who got into the hobby, got into the purchase, you know, 20 years ago. Those people got into it with a very different type of comic. The content was, was very different. And they have a collector's mentality. And so they go to their local comic shop to collect. And that's where a lot of comic shops, that's how they've been geared and, and how they've been structured. But this is the broken part of comics. So we talk about how do you help the comic industry? Um, it's got to get bigger. The market's got to get bigger. The volume's got to get bigger. And the only way to do that is to start moving away from the niche that it's currently appealing to and into the mass market, which means, yes, you do need to have those comics in Walmart and Target and Best Buy, if Best Buy is still around, and the grocery store if you can do it. You need that capability. Um, Europe saw a bit of a resurgence in comics in the last three or four years. One of the things that happened, I mean, there are a lot of things that happened, so it wasn't, it wasn't down to one thing. But one of the things that did happen is that the grocery stores started carrying more graphic novels. Now, again, is that, is that the sole culprit for why it grew? No. But it's one more place. It's one more entry point. It's how you grow out of the niche. So it's important. But I think back on that, that moment where DC did the thing with Walmart, and that was probably the indicator, one of the best indicators of where things were stuck and where they're going to go wrong. Because the fact that both the company and the market, the retailer market in this case, um, were so divided on the issue, were so polarized at the idea, was an indicator that you know the, they, they weren't ready yet to actually make this business move. So, of course, business move didn't go well. But anyway, <laughs> such as it is. Um, what do you think of all this? Let me know in the comments below. And thanks for listening.